Good day to all the Narans on the go and in the know. November 1, 2019. No hype, no BS, just the facts. Hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next post. I encourage you, knowledge is power. Stay informed and stay alert, and know that today, we are one day closer than yesterday. The need for the global currency reset, the danger of bogus economics, a crash in the stock market now would immediately be followed by a recession, unemployment would soar, the Dow would be cut in half, voters would say to each other, unaware that what was unfolding was due to incompetence and deception, T. Trump fault and they would promptly elect Ms. Warren as the next elect Ms. Warren as the next president of the USA. Although the whole game is humbug, and then, what would happen next? Here is where it gets interesting, if despite President Trump magic wand, the market crashes before the 2020 election, odds are that President Trump will lose to Ms. Warren, if Mr. Market holds his fire. On the other hand, President Trump has decent odds of re-election, but, it hardly matters economically, because when the crisis comes President Trump or Ms. Warren will react in about the same way. Both will be faced with an inflate or die trap, and neither wants to see their career die. Besides, each has the same tools to work with. Inflation, price rigging and boondoggles. And both have a whole gaggle of enabling economists, who maintain that stimulating the economy is the only way to go. The first shock, will be coming soon. The fake world of fake money and fake interest rates will collide with the real world. Debts will deflate. Along with stocks, real estate, and more. Then comes the second shock caused by the central bank's response to the first shock. Remember, it inflate or die, they will not hold back, inflating the economy with both monetary and fiscal stimuli, and, unless something really weird happens, it will lead to an a hyperinflationary crisis. The Federal Reserve, like the ECB already does, will soon resume purchases of short-term U.S. Treasury bonds to expand its balance sheet in the hope of preventing a repeat of the recent disruption in overnight repo markets said Chairman Jay Powell. Well, the good news is that if inflation is what they want, inflation is what they will get, but not necessarily the tame, friendly, controlled inflation they are hoping for. The monetary inflation that the Fed is pushing for, will soon will be followed by fiscal inflation, because of bigger deficits. Just recently this has come to our attention. The Fed has announced QE4 and involved the buying of toxic assets. From for failing too big to fail banks at face value, to the tune of 350 billion in four days, that has the market transitioned into an exponential bailout territory looking for an additional $20 trillion bank bailout in November 2019. The Federal Reserve announced it would continue pumping up to $75 billion into the money markets until early November, with more and or to come if needed, but that not all. The Fed is also injecting money into the system as part of its reserve management program. It began this week with $7.5 billion. Together, these initiatives should put over $850 billion of new money into the system over the next 12 months, even without a crisis. To fully understand what is going on, take a look back nearly half a century ago. In 1971, the Feds pulled the old gold restrictions off and substituting it with a new currency known as the Federal Reserve Notes for the old, transformed the reliable gold-backed dollar into the petrodollar. The old dollar was handcuffed to gold at a fixed rate of $35 per ounce. Where gold went, the dollar went, too. But the new dollar was more obedient. It went wherever its masters wanted it to go. So, for the last almost 50 years, the Fed's central bank the Federal Reserve has been slipping new bills to Wall Street and the elite. It funded their speculations, their buybacks, and their bonuses. It guaranteed that their investments WOULD and go down, at any rate, that left them with about $30 trillion in extra wealth that they never earned, and as high the elite being so much richer, compared to everyone else, than they were 30 years ago. Remember, after a brief and insincere flirtation with normalcy, the Fed is back to its old, perverted tricks robbing the middle classes in order to reward the rich. And so, the debt will grow faster, which will eventually involve debt held by the public, retirees included. It will soon be 95% of GDP within a decade. In other words, the public is going to be holding the bag, leaving the former middle class angry, indebted, and hopeless. The rich elite will keep getting their money, and will be alright, 
As of now it is comfortably nestled in the prices of their stocks and bonds, which they are counting on their friends at the central bank to protect, while the middle classes get lumbered with a debt amounting to $22 trillion of public debt so far and accumulating exponentially to an estimated $40 trillion by the end of the next decade. Nobody knows when or how the banking system will fail, only is known that it will, while there are no plans for after the crash, which means it up to ourselves to sort things out, because, the fiscal inflation will lead to consumer price inflation, inflation that lowers the purchase value of money, better known as the reduction in people purchasing power, by increased prices of goods and services, that wreaks havoc on just about everyone. If President Trump wants to be re-elected there is no other way out than to make gold money again. Most people don't realize that they need to own gold. They will come to that realization soon. Gold is severely undervalued relative to where it should be because too many people still have too much confidence in central banks and fiat money. They don't realize they need to own gold. There is no doubt that the price of gold and by the same token silver too, is going to explode very soon. The appropriate solution is simple. Is there another way out of this dilemma? Of course there is a solution. It is the implementation of setback currencies which is the process of establishing a currency based on gold or silver assets within a sovereign country. In an asset back system, precious metal PM assets are the justification to establish the amount of currency available in a country, but all denominations of currencies must be accepted within the QFS and be given a gold asset certificate to be active within the QFS. Otherwise we are back to square one, with history repeating itself again, with privately owned central banks fleecing the populace even more, as it is impossible to fix the existing system into a sound monetary system. The old fiat money system must be changed into the new QFS, then automatically all central bank activities will cease to have any relevance within this new financial system. Any country that is not GISARA compliant will be left out of the QFS and will eventually be left out of international trade. Non-compliant countries, if any, will be left to barter commodities or work out a credit exchange with other countries, a system that does not lend itself to carrying out of business at any level of relevance. If the price of gold goes up, the value of all currencies will go up as well, resulting in no net change to the par value between the various currencies. This will definitely end the currency and trade wars, which will become a thing of the past. In order for this to occur, each sovereign country has to comply with some basic parameters of the designated formula, which includes the existence of ground assets or commodities, the economy, the population, which is also considered an asset, and a number of other factors to determine the value of the country currency. This formula is to be applied to each country so that all currencies will be on par value with one another. The application of the formula and the common value of all gold means that one country currency has to have the same value as another country currency. This process is called the global currency reset. The reset of all currencies on par with all other world currencies and they each have gold certificates to validate authenticity. It is an explicit requirement that each country use the reset formula and apply the global standards, so that the QFS is able to function as planned. That is why a country must be GISARA compliant to participate in the QFS. Moreover, there is enough sound money available to save the whole world from the cabal planned financial Armageddon disaster. Some of the funds available among others are the global collateral accounts. The global collateral accounts. The global collateral accounts are real. They also contain assets that belong to people long dead and whose specific heirs are not known, and as a result, those assets belong to the populace at large and there is really no reason to leave them sitting around in bank deposit boxes doing no earthly good. Fair enough. Some years ago a great house cleaning effort began in the Swiss vaults and has continued ever since. Unfortunately, most of the banks involved in the house cleaning effort used the opportunity to try to get rid of evidence of their own wrongdoing, try to cheat depositors out of the interest that the banks owed them, and additionally pulled off very shady deals, claiming that huge amounts of assets were abandoned by legitimate trustees and known beneficiaries, when they really weren't abandoned at all. The irony is that most of these historic trusts belong to people who have no interest in wielding huge amounts of money and who want the assets be used for the same or similar purposes as the global collateral accounts are meant to serve. That is, they are willing to serve the same philanthropic purposes as the global collateral accounts, 
It is the same thing with the gold confiscated from our great-grandparents and grandparents back in the 1930, which the World Bank and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development claimed as secondary creditors. Those assets and all the years of interest owed on them would have been rolled into the global collateral accounts, it is said. In any event, there are a lot going on in the background and a lot of dirty deals have been pulled off by the banks including a lot of false claims of abandonment of funds and abandonment of assets which may have been made due to ignorance or purposely for reasons of fraudulent financial gain. Finally, the absolute deadline for U.S. incorporated slash Federal Reserve Central Bank cabal has been surpassed. They didn't come up with quadrillions in gold for debt repayment to keep their fiat global monetary system afloat. This implicates their complete loss of control over the United States and the global monetary system. The day is approaching when people are going to wake up en masse with the inevitable crash of the financial world. Those accustomed to living off of government spending, are either directly or indirectly, going to be in trouble, resulting from the fact that unfortunately, a good number of the more than 7 billion human beings on the planet will feel pain or even suffer death. The world debt is documented in bonds which are contracts that promise payment of a debt, with regard to the wealthy that hold large quantities of bonds. When the crash arrives, their bonds will become worthless pieces of paper. And, that is the nasty surprise that is coming for the wealthy. History of the Global Collateral Accounts The global collateral accounts have a deep and complex history. In short, these are off-ledger accounts backed by gold, silver and many other assets which were originally intended for humanitarian projects. President John F. Kennedy signed what is known as the Green Hilton Memorial Agreement with President Sukarno of Indonesia, which was to use these accounts to issue a new U.S. Treasury note backed by gold and silver which was to end the Federal Reserve control over the global financial system. Now, Neil Keenan is getting very close to opening these accounts for the intended purposes of transforming our world for the better through many humanitarian projects as well as the release of free energy technologies and an overhaul in the global financial system. Russia, China, Iran, Indonesia and almost the entire Eastern Hemisphere is supporting this plan in one way or another. The Chinese elders individually placed gold on deposit with the Bank for International Settlements BIS in Basel, Switzerland as they are the legal individual owners of these accounts and deposits but they have been repeatedly denied access to their accounts, or the use thereof, since the time of their initial deposits, which is a tremendous fraud. These original depositors are clearly identified in official records held by the BIS, the elder depositors' records, and also with Neil Keenan. At no time whatsoever have the owner depositors ever relinquished their claims to their assets on deposit but have repeatedly tried to secure them for proper use for the benefit of mankind as originally intended. Fundamentals of the Global Collateral Accounts In short, the fundamentals of global collateral accounts can be summarized to constitute, in essence the story of gold versus debt. This can be traced back to the Western banking oligarchy that is headed by the Othschild land and their dominance of international banking that started in the early years of the 19th century. The long-term strategy of the elite banking and royal bloodline families was simple, gain control of the global gold supply in order to maintain power through the control of global currency and its underlying collateral. 2,000 years ago, the gold of the world flowed east toward China, along the Silk Road. Oh, to obtain control of the world financial system, control of most of the gold was essential. Military invasions in China, Japan and other Asian countries had the purpose of seizing the hundreds of thousands of metric tons of accumulated gold. Add to this the well-known Nazi gold-collecting scheme, and the accumulation of the far greater Japanese hoard, was accomplished through information and collaboration of in particular European banking interests. In the period before and during WW2, the official total for the entire amount of gold to be above ground since humanity first began mining the precious metal is said to be approximately 160,000 metric tons. Evidence now indicates that a more accurate figure shows that this is well in excess of 2 million metric tons. About 12.5 times more than the official amount reported, especially if the amount that is currently unmined in the Grand Canyon, that was made illegal to mine years ago, simply because the amount there would shatter the global elite system as we know it. Don't believe me? Google it yourself. The exact total of the wealth in the off-ledger global accounts is not known, but is said to be in the thousands of trillions of dollars in gold, platinum, silver, and gems, 
in addition to an undetermined amount in Federal Reserve notes and other currencies, at the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944, when the soon-to-be victorious allies met to create a new global financial system, the Rothschild-owned International Monetary Fund as created. In the late 1940, resident Sukarno F. Indonesia was appointed monetary controller on behalf of the depositors of the gold to monitor and implement the global accounts for redevelopment purposes. The central banking family's Rothschild CS had already put in place essential structures to seize and control this wealth, the Ankh of International Settlements, also owned by the Rothschilds, the International Monetary Fund, the Council on Foreign Relations, ND the United Nations, all of which were funded and owned by elite banking figures, including the Rockefellers and Arbergs. He forged agreements to use the funds for redevelopment and humanitarian projects were ignored and the banking elite proceeded to use these funds for their own interests. By blocking the depositors from their access, the Rothschilds through the Fed put in place a system that allows central banks to block anyone but banking elite insiders from using the accounts, thus also blocking the actual owners the depositors from utilizing the assets for humanitarian programs. As originally envisioned, this comprises as a tremendous fraud. The Dragon family appointed Neil Keenan to solve the malversations, the emergence of Isle Keenan T. The cutting edge of these events can be traced to the theft in 2009 by Vatican financial insider Anil Dal Bosco F. $144.5 billion in Federal Reserve notes, which were entrusted to Mr. Keenan by the Rugon family, the group of ancient wealthy clans in Asia who are the legitimate owners of vast amounts of gold in the off ledger global accounts. The Dragon family has been attempting for decades to utilize the accounts for their originally envisioned purpose, and sought out Keenan help because of his reputation as being a well-connected, tough-minded international businessman. To put the record straight, over the last two years within the Intel community it has been reported about four times that Neil Keenan had been killed, and the one now portraying himself as Neil is a clone. This is blatant misinformation that the original source didn't correct. FWC investigation has uncovered that fortunately, Neil is still alive and in good health. Not only is Neil Keenan in charge, but the Federal Reserve has since lost Neil over $1 billion lawsuit. On March 13, 2014, an S obliged to return all the stolen gold to its rightful owners. His of course, has never materialized and neither has it been openly announced anywhere. Heavily implicated in this global account swindle are George Herbert Walker Bush, since executed by the Patriots for his involvement, George W. Bush, Queen Elizabeth II, the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, David Rockefeller, Hillary Clinton, and a host of other world figures and organizations who are in the inner circle of the cabal and involved in the deep state power structure, the people found to have been swindling with the global accounts will be prosecuted. Mr. Keenan is in the possession of key documents, such as the original Green Hilton Memorial Agreement between Kennedy and Sukarno, and the Black Book, secret record of the accounts. The East has most of the world gold, and the updated documentation to a galley ring down the corrupt institutions that have been legally seeing the global collateral accounts are in the possession of Neil Keenan. The alliance of Chinese elders decided to begin creating the new gold and asset-backed financial system. Several other nations joined them and have already signed the acknowledgement of Memorandum of the Agreement documentation, which resulted in this alliance of 209 countries, recapitulating. Important forces under Trump team and the Patriots are mobilizing to defeat the deep state on all fronts, however many more awakened people are needed to overthrow all the governments in the world that are infested with cabal puppets implicated in these scandalous and treacherous frauds. To start with, all known government leaders, foreign, and financial ministers and all their predecessors, must be brought to justice and convicted for high treason, if not already included in the 125.000 sealed indictments, to mobilize support for this initiative. Do your part by sharing this article with everyone you know who you feel may be concerned about our freedoms and a sound future for their children and grandchildren. Inspire them to join our mutual fight to defeat the Jesuit Freemason Khazarian Mafia. Never forget. Life begins where oppression ends. If you enjoyed this video hit that like, subscribe button and the alert bell so you don't miss my next one. I encourage you, knowledge is power, stay informed and stay alert. Over and out for now, the Dinarian.